Hi, everybody. So I think I'm live. I, uh, I'm trying the Facebook live producer tonight. So we'll see. I was, I'm still having problems with StreamYard here. So we're going to see if this one works better. So hopefully you can see me. I'm going to get my tablet started here. Just a second. tablet started here just a second all right so i've got it going <laughs> just a second here oh it always wants me to cast to my tv i don't need to be on television so all right i think this is it so now i can see oh yay i can see people's comments so okay hi everybody <laughs> well we're gonna try this and see if this works better i am still having trouble with Streamyard here they keep telling me it's the internet and I'm having a hard time believing that because I can test the internet here with my phone, with my Orbi. I have like an app for my, um, an app like for my router here. And I use the same one at home. Um, and it's testing like really well. So I don't think it's the internet, but they keep telling me it is. So I ordered a cord that I can plug into my computer, but I haven't got the adapter yet. So we'll try this and see if it works tonight. So how is everybody today? People are coming in. Everybody's hearing me okay? I had a, I always have to turn the camera or the sound down a little bit on this camera. So I did. Is, is everybody hearing me all right? Looks like people are. I'm seeing your comments see tonight. So awesome. Everybody can hear me? Yep. Good evening. Can hear and see you. Awesome cool so it looks like we're doing okay yeah this this i haven't done it this way for a while so this is the way i always used to you know do lives is just through facebook so we'll give it a whirl and see if it works out okay tonight so last week was a little bit of a bummer i didn't like the video because it stopped a lot so um i have 11 days with oh no oh claire i'm so glad you're feeling better what a bummer I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, somebody's from, oh, hi, hi, Jackie. I've got some new people from outside of the state. So Jackie's from California. I hope it's warmer there. It's very, it's very cold here right now, Jackie. We're in Iowa. So, okay. So I'm, this is what we're going to work on tonight, but I'm going to show you what I've been working on. I've been playing today. I haven't been working too much. So I've been playing, but this is what we're going to do tonight. So we're going to do this, darling, this is the square, February square bench, buddy. And this is called You're So Sweet, I Bottle You Up. So I just called it You're So Sweet. So this is, it's really fun and easy to do. So this one is what we're going to do tonight. And we won't get like every single little thing done. I, the, I'm going to do the, um, the jar and I pre-sewed this. This is just, just lettering. And then I, I pre-sewed a little bit on the, um, on the pinwheel. So I think most of you have done pinwheels before. So I'm going to do most of it tonight. And then the binding, um, we won't do the binding in class tonight, but the binding is like the January pillow binding that I did quite, not a complete, really detailed video, but then the September pillows had a really detailed binding video if you need help. Okay, so that it's hard to do all the binding when they have binding. It takes a while, you know, so. Okay, so this is what we're going to do tonight, but I wanted to show you what I've been playing with. I decided to have a play day <laughs> today. So I, I bought the um, Kimber Bell. This is the new pillow. It's called Lucky Us. So I have the top all done. The, the squares go together very quickly. And um, most of them are small. Um, this this one is big here. Oh, I will, Cindy. I will, Cindy, show you how to do the pinwheels. But I just did a little bit of pre-sewing to make it go a little faster. But I will. How much the binding foot is? Um, which one do you want, Jan? There's several of them. The only one that... that um, I actually use... I'll show it to you. I think I have it here. I'll show it to you. Okay, so anyway, here's my, here's my Lucky Us. I got the whole center done. 
This is what I've been working on today. And then um, here's the, I got the borders quilted, but I haven't put them on yet. So I'll do those tomorrow. So here's the inner border. And then there's an outer border also that's thicker. All right. So this is a one inch border. And I think the flange, they call it a flange. So the flange is like two inches, I think. So, so I'll do that. Um, I'm going to work on that tomorrow, I think. But this one was all pretty much done in a five by seven hoop, except for this block I did in a bigger hoop so I could do it all in one hooping. So, but the rest of it, you can do in a five by seven. So it was fun. That was a, that was a fun, been a fun project. So I've been wanting to make one of those square pillows instead of the um, bench, but bench pillows. So I thought it was cute. So sorry, I got an itchy nose tonight. Okay. And then um, next week, I'll show you that at the end. So next, I've got next week's project here too. So, all right. So is everybody ready to start another bench buddy? I just love these little pillows. They're so fun and they turn out so cute. Um, easy to do. So, all right, just a second here. I got to unplug something here. I was sewing last, so I'm going to turn the camera around. And we're going to talk about the cutting first. So, whoops, a second here. Boy, I got cat hair all over this. I wonder what my cat was laying on. It must have. All right, so let me turn this around. We're going to talk a little bit about, first, we're going to talk a little bit about the um, cutting. There was a couple of things that I noticed there was some inconsistencies in this set. This is the very first set of Bench Buddies they did. And so I noticed that there's some inconsistencies in some of the cutting. And so I've kind of gone through and thought, oh, well, I we didn't do them that way before. So the, oh, I got to get on the right one. So this is the square one. Here we go. Um, there is, you need wording background, and that's for, whoops, I've got to find it. Here's the wording. I already sewed it out. And, oh, yeah, Jan, the, I know the Chiefs are playing tonight. Tim's going to be watching that, too. Okay, so here is the, um, the, the, board, the, background for the wording they told you in here to, to cut it seven and a half by seven and a half but it only needs to be six and a half by six and a half just so you know and then i put shape flex on the back that was one of the changes they made it a little bit ultra big and it only needs to be six and a half inches square um you're going to cut some squares for your pinwheels so here's there's there's going to be two of the polka dot ones and two of the um i had the plaid for your pinwheels and then you're going to do um oh the back get that here there's a couple little border pieces that gonna go that are going to go above and below the little jar so here's the little border pieces and i made the backing out of the same so i have my backing cut here and then um the jar background is going to be that's my pink here okay and on this one, I'm also going to put shape flex because I want to have a little bit of body to it. So this one has shape flex on it. And um, I did cut it the six and a half by eight and a half because that one was okay. Um, let's see. Oh, and you know what? I think I forgot to get my rulers out. So I may have to go grab my rulers. And then there's some little pieces that you need for the appliques. So there's a heart, a red, a pink, and a white that you cut out for applique hearts. And then there's a piece of um, gray for the lid, jar lid. And then there's a piece of vinyl, clear vinyl, that we're going to put on the jar. Okay. So I did forget my ruler. So if you give me a minute, I'm going to run over here and grab my rulers out of the bag so that they're a little closer to me. Okay. I had too much fun playing today. I forgot to get my rulers out. Okay. All right. So there's all the pieces that we need for our little pillow. Oh, and then you're going to need some um, Valentine confetti. This is put inside the jar so that you have some more, some more stuff in there besides the hearts. And I bought this, I want to say, at either Hobby Lobby or Joann's. So I just had, this is a great big huge bag. Obviously, I'm going to be using it for a while. So I'll get some confetti out of that when we get to that point. And you need, oh, and a piece of twine. You need a piece of twine. I like that 
black and white striped twine. And then um, this is my binding, is this black and white stripes for my binding, okay? So I got that all ready to go. I, I, I uh, got it all folded and sewn together, so, okay? All right, so that's the cutting. And then I just used three colors on this. I used red, kind of a pink color. Um, it was red, pastel pink, and black. Now the, um, the, they have you do the first block, this block first, okay? And we're gonna hoop it exactly the same way as I hooped the one tonight. So I'll, we'll go back in, to this one in a minute. We're gonna do the one with the jar, okay? With all the fun applique on it. So I did that whole thing with just black thread. And then this one, I'll, we'll t talk about it um, before we put it together. But um, you hoop it the same way as I hoop this next one, all right? Okay, so we're going to go on and go to the um, jar block. And I do these a little different. It calls for cutaway. I'm sure it does. I will check it. They always call for cutaway stabilizer. I think you have to go all the way back to, like, the first one. Yeah. So... They always do these with cutaway, and I don't care for the cutaway on them because there's times I use cutaway, but in this case, what happens is the um, when you go to put the pillow forms in, the, the blocks kind of, um, how do I say it? The blocks kind of pull a little bit with that cutaway in them. So I like to use tearaway for these because this is really, you know, fabric you would use tearaway normally. And I don't do all the you know, center, finding the center mark and the whole thing. I, I just kind of eyeball this. And this, and I've got my shape flex on the back. So I'm going to turn this over. And this has been my little trick ever since I started doing these. And the quilts. I do the quilts this way too. I know it sounds silly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fabric glue stick. I've got my shape flex on the back of my pink fabric here. And I'm just going to take my fabric glue stick. And I'm just going to put some glue stick on the back of this. I know that sounds silly, but this works really well, and then I'm just going to hoop the whole thing. So what we're going to do is just kind of, you know, put this on to my stabilizer here, kind of centered. I cut, this is for a 5 by 7 hoop, so I cut my stabilizer 9 by 12. It seems to work really well. Sorry, you may see an orange cat coming through. She's acting very odd right at the moment. <laughs> So she's out here helping me, sorry. Okay, so I got that stuck down to my stabilizer, and then I'm just going to take my 5x7 hoop, sorry, I got glue on the fingers now. I'm going to take my 5x7 hoop, and I'm just going to eyeball this and get it, you know, as centered as I possibly can. It's a little hard for me to do this on the machine, so I'll do the best I can here. Let me pull this back so you can see what I'm doing. Pull this back this way. And I'm just going to kind of get this centered as best I can. And then I am going to just hoop this. Okay, so I didn't do all the, you know, centering and all that. I just get it as close as I can in the hoop. And that works just fine. And then I've got it glued down to my stabilizer. Okay. And the, that is also then how I, just a second here, get it tightened up a little bit. That is also then how I hooped my little square, You're So Sweet, I Could Bottle You Up. So I pre-sewed this because it's just lettering. And um, I did that one in a, five, a four by four hoop. So I usually use like an eight by eight pieces tear away. This one also had the shape flex, you know, glued it, glued it down to my stabilizer, just hooped the whole thing and stitched it out. Okay. So I do these, I always do these with tear away. All right, so is there any questions about the stabilizer? Does that make sense to everybody? So I did use tearaway and not cutaway and got it in the hoop here. So now we're ready to start stitching. So I've got um, in my machine, I've got the little, it's the little jar um, with the hearts in it. And I'm going to use black thread for the whole thing. I just use black for the whole thing. I think I need to thread my machine here. Okay, 
feel like I'm disorganized today. I don't know. So um, the first step is going to be some inner detail for the jar. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch out number one. And whoops, maybe did the thread up? Oh, yep, threaded. There we go. So I'm just going to stitch out number one. I've got um, just white regular, you know, embroidery bobbin thread in the in the bobbin, and I've got um, I've got a number eleven embroidery needle on. Or in the machine, I should say. Not on, but in the machine. And then we're going to do a little applique. But I don't remember what colors I used, so I'll have to look at my sample here. I think I used red for the first one. Oh yeah, I wrote it down. <laughs> Good thing. I wouldn't have remembered. Okay. So it does a little bit of detail for the jar there. And then the next step is going to be... Um, the red heart. So I used the smaller piece of fabric and I made it red. So I'm going to go ahead and do my placement line first. Now this is going to be raw edge applique. Um, lots of times when I do raw edge applique, I put some shape flex on the back of the fabric and we'll talk about that now as a st stitching. This is for the lid and I did put a piece of shape flex on the back of this just to keep it from fraying quite so much. But these hearts are going to be under the vinyl. So I figured they probably aren't going to get handled. You know, the, they're not going to get touched that much. So, um, so hopefully um, they shouldn't fray as much then. Okay, so I didn't put any shape flex on these. But often I do on, on my um, appliques if it's going to be raw edge. So I'm just going to lay my, my um, red down over the placement line. And step number three, then, is going to be the tack down. It's going to do like a little triple stitch. For those of you who did um, Kimberbell Club on uh, Monday night, this, this is actually a very similar pattern. The, the, the pattern for the pillow is actually the same pattern with a different, obviously, different block in it because we also made a pin pinwheel that night. Okay, so now we're going to do some trimming. I'm going to go ahead and trim my little heart. Now again, this is raw edge, so you know, maybe stay about an eighth of an inch away. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. So maybe about an eighth, eighth of an inch away. Let me pull this back just a little so you can see. And this, like I said, this is going to have the little um, piece of vinyl over the top, so it's not going to get handled so that these are not going to fray out really bad. And we're going to put some confetti in here, so it's really cute. This has been one of my favorite. Um, I love these February pillows. They were so cute. I really, I, I've liked all of them. I've done these, um, actually I've done these before because I did these several years ago, so I got to do them again. So I've made three of, three of the January through April ones of each one. Alright, so I didn't get too, I got a little bit wonky up here, so we'll do a little trimming. Alright, so there's my first part with the raw edge applique. All right, now step number, let's see, step number four in the machine is going to be the placement line for the heart down. That's going to be kind of down this way. I think that might be the pink one. Let's see here. I think I did that one in pink. Yep, I wrote it up. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. This is a little bit bigger one, so this was the little bit bigger piece of, of applique fabric. Okay, so we're going to lay this one over the placement line. And I, again, I just am doing the whole thing in black. So if you don't want to do it in black, you can do matching fat, you know, thread for your fabric if you want. I just like the black with it. It showed up in the jar, I thought, really well with the black. So let me show you the pillow again without stitching. But I, I kind of like the black outlines because it showed up real well in the, in the side of the jar then. 
this is a little bit bigger heart. Hi, Julie. People are coming in. Oh, hi, Lynn. Lynn got here. Trying to see. I'm actually the the um, comments are coming through better here than they do on Streamyard. So, <laughs> so has everything been stable so far? Have you had any blips or or stops? Has it been going okay? Why don't you give me some thumbs ups if you're if it's going okay? All right. So we're just gonna trim this. This is. Hi, Sharon. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to trim this. And we're again, we're going to stay about an eighth of an inch or so. So it's going okay? Oh, awesome. No, no stopping tonight. That was quite distressful for me last week. And then I spent the whole week trying to figure out what it is. And I got online with StreamYard and they say it's my internet. But everything tests so well, I just don't understand why it's a problem. Well, I do have Mediacom, but I've also got Mediacom at home, and I never have problems there. And nothing, I mean, everything here has been, like, super good. I haven't had any problems at all. <sighs> all right, so there's my, but in the since I taught a month ago, um, in November, you know, I taught, well, I should say in the middle of December, see, we've also had snow and it's gotten very cold. So maybe something happened outdoors. You know, I haven't seen, I haven't been able to find if there's anything outside. But if this is working, we may just go this direction. It's fine. All right, so there's our little heart. There's our pink one. And then the last hearts, there's actually going to be three smaller ones. And we're going to do those all at the same time. So step number six in the machine is going to be the placement lines for those. Make sure I didn't lose my final. Got to hang on to that stuff. Yeah, the stitch out on this particular project, this particular one was um, five minutes. You've had problems, Dan. Yeah, I, I've i never had problems with, with Mediacom, but here I have to use their equipment, and I don't at home. Um, at home I use, I have my own modem, I own my modem and my router, and here I have to use theirs because Dad has a telephone. So I just wondered if it's something to do with that, because I've never had any problems ever. But I also own my own equipment. Okay, so here's my little placement lines, and I've got a bigger piece, this this white with the little white red polka dots. So we're going to put that over the all all three of the little hearts at the same time. And and what I try to do, it doesn't always work well. I try to get, at least get a couple of polka dots in each heart. You can kind of see the <laughs> the you can kind of see the uh, you know the outlines underneath. So I got it turned so that I think I've got some polka dots in every heart. So we'll see. All right, so it's going to do the tack down line. And these are also um, raw edge. So got the first one there. Looks like I got a tail again. My machine's been leaving tails lately. I don't know why. So I'm going to have to ask Tim about that. second one. I think this was one of my favorite ones. I really liked the January one with the little penguin too. That one was really fun to make. I've enjoyed doing all of these. Now I have done these, the January through April ones. Um, some years ago I made them. But um, I, I have not done the May, June, July, and August ones. So those are fun too. So. All right. Oh, well, it looks like maybe I got some polka dots and at least a couple polka dots in every heart. <laughs> They're not very big, so. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and gotta pull those little, get those little ends off there. Okay, so now we're going to do the trimming on these. And 
just do the same thing. We're going to trim about an eighth of an inch away from the stitching. And I think when I did these the first time, I might have actually done matching thread on the hearts, like I did white on these. And but I just did it all in black this time, just because I like the darker color. Um, outlines inside the jar. It seemed like they showed up better or something. They had more definition inside that, that vinyl. Looks like I have another tail here just a second. There we go. Okay, anybody got questions so far? Are we doing okay? Everybody's quiet tonight. We've been, I've been, so like, yeah, so I've been enjoying working on that, that little, um, St. Patty's Day pillow today. I've been wanting to make it. I got, just got it. It just came out and it's one of the ones you got to go get from the vault. So it just came out, um, I think it was just a couple weeks ago I got it. And then I ordered a kit. So all I have left to do is the, put the borders on. So borders in the back. But I have to quilt the borders yet. All right, so we're getting there. And let's see, we'll get around here. All right. All right. Now, the next thing we have to do is put the vinyl on. And we're going to do a placement line. So you always want to make sure when you do this vinyl that you don't have a bunch of like little funny things underneath there you don't want to you know black little specks or anything underneath your vinyl so i always have to make sure i look real close right and the next step in the machine though is actually the placement line yes for the for the plot for the vinyl so we're just going to go ahead and stitch out number eight and that's going to be our placement line how much was your kit? Um, I think it was around $39.95, Jan. I got it at, from um, my, whoops, a second here. Evidently, my dis machine decided not to sell. Let's go back and see if we can get it to sell. Um, I got it from uh, my girlfriend's quilt shop. I think it was $39.95. It came with the embellishments, which was nice. So let's back up. My machine decided it wasn't going to sew it. There we go. See if it's happier now. There we go. Did you get the clothing designs? Yes, I did, Cindy. Um, they actually had them on sale. I don't know if they're still on sa on sale, but it's the um, there's three. I think there's three different ones. It's either two or three different ones that that you use. So I yes, I did get those. All right. So here's my my placement line. Okay. So, um, <laughs> the one thing, if, if you do all the, the centering that, you know, with the heat sense or the, like the water soluble pen and everything, they say to make sure you take the mark out of there cause it won't come out. So that's one reason that I don't never mark anything in the center. Cause then I have trouble with those marks sometimes coming out. So, um, now is the time that we're going to put some confetti in here too. So I'm going to make sure I have a note, make sure there's no jumps or the lint, there's no lint under here, or there's no jump stitches that are, you know, I, I get these tails, so I got to make sure there's no tails sticking up in here. Looks pretty good otherwise. And make sure there's no lint in there, and then we're going to put a little confetti in here too. And it says to put a quarter of a teaspoon. Well... I don't have a teaspoon, so or a quarter of a teaspoon out here, so I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to, we're just going to put some in. So let's see. I got a, I got a lot, so I have plenty. So we're just going to dump some in here. I don't want to put too much in, but just kind of dump some different pieces in here. There's a whole bunch of different, like this one has different sizes and and different kinds of little parts. So I was just going to. Put a little bit of a variety in here so there's some of everything in there oops let's see i'm gonna take a couple more of these bigger ones out with the jar there's plenty of room to put confetti so this is bigger than some of them these are this, this is a double one second hand 
think they're stuck together. Put my glasses on so I can see. Yeah, so there's some that like were like this that they have like a little emboss thing in there and and there's some that these little ones and there's some that are open like this. So I'm just going to kind of put a variety pack in here. Put this one in, put a couple of those in. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Got a few of these little ones in there. You don't want to put too much. You don't want to cover up all the cute applique we just did. And second, I, well, Cindy, Kim said you would be on sale until, oh, till the 5th of, of February. Okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. The, yeah, the, I knew they were going to have them on sale, the, the designs. Uh, they had like a little pack for the for the pillow, and it was 20% off. So, um, But I knew it was limited. It wasn't, you know, permanent. <laughs> and I think there was three different designs, I think, in there that you could get. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so then I want to make sure I don't have any funky, like, little ands or anything linty in there, okay? That you don't want under, because remember, the vinyl is going to go on here next. Get my confetti out of the way. So what do you think my confetti? I think that will work. Yeah, I read I read a little bit about the, um, let's see. And then, oh, I've got to find my plastic. Here we go. Here's my vinyl. So yeah, so I think this will be good. And then it's going to stitch like right along here. So make sure that you've got your confetti like inside where it's going to be stitching so you don't get it stitched sewn into your lines. I did that once on one of my pillows. So, okay, let's we'll see here. Let's see if I can get some of the, got an awful lot of hand, fingerprints on my vinyl, so I'll wipe it off a little bit. Also make sure you don't have like lint on your vinyl on the inside where you don't want it. Or in my case, it's usually cat hair. So I usually kind of wipe it off to make sure I don't have cat hair under it. Let's see, that looks pretty good. All right, so then I'm going to lay this down over my confetti and over my hearts. That looks pretty good. Whoops, there's cat hair in there, though. Look at there. It attracts it. Good thing I got my glasses on. All right, did I get it? I think I got it. Yep, looks pretty good. Okay, then step number nine in the machine is going to be the tack down. Now, it says to tape it. Now, in this case, I probably will, just because this stuff scoots. This plastic likes to scoot. So I am going to put a, little, a couple pieces of tape on this one. I usually just hold stuff, but sometimes the scooty stuff I like to put tape on. Okay. So now number nine is going to be that tack down. Got our confetti in there. I've got it away from the line. Hopefully it won't jiggle over into the line. I, I sewed through some of my confetti in the one of my little pillows. Oops. Now the only thing that you have to be careful of then when we get ready to put this together and maybe use an iron to put this together, be very careful of that vinyl. Don't touch it with your iron. I have ha always had trouble with vinyls. So I'm, I, I try to be careful, but you know, inevitably, it seems like I touch it. I've had to rip quilts apart and take blocks out and do them over because I touched the vinyl in the middle of it. <laughs> okay. So I, I think we did get, did well with the confetti. It didn't get stuck anywhere. So the next step then is going to be to trim. And you want to trim about an eighth of an inch away from the, the stitching line. So we're going to trim that vinyl next. Just a second here. Put my glasses back on. And I like to use these double curved scissors when I'm trimming. There's lots of good applique scissors, but these have always been my favorite. These are Gingers. Six inch double curved scissors. There's I've been using these for years because they do get real close and they're sharp. I've been using these for years and years, but we have them up on our website if you don't have a pair. They did go up in price a little bit around Christmas time, but they're worth it. 
you got to be a little careful with them. They're a little on the dainty side, so don't be dropping them all the time. Sometimes the handles will bend. If you keep dropping them, ask me how I know. I have a tendency to drop my scissors a lot. All right, getting about around there. Okay. Just about around. There we go. Whoops. Okay. So there's the vinyl. The vinyl is on. The last step is going to be our, um, the last two steps, I should say, is going to be the jar lid. So I'm going to go ahead and step number 10 is going to be the placement line for that jar lid. Just a second here. I'm going to reset so I can... do the trimming for you and I can't remember what size this one is. This one squares up to what size? They instructions are different on this one so I have to look. So here's my placement line. So now I'm going to use that this is going to be raw edge applique again. So I did take my fabric and I put some shape flex on the back just to give me a little less fraying since this is going to be out, you know, this is going to be out where people where people could touch it. All right, so I did I did put a little fray, or a little um, shape flex on the back of that, and now we're going to do the tack down for that one. Trying to remember how big this one was trimmed to. I don't remember. I'll do our um, I'll do all the trimming at the same time so we'll go on and do the little um, the little pinwheel and then I'll go I'll get up and do the trimming but I have to find the trimming instructions because the, the instructions for this this was the first set they did so the instructions are a little different than they are um, for the newer ones um, things were are in a slightly different place so so it's gonna do all this cool detail on the jar lid. Can you see the confetti bouncing around in there? And then this one's going to be the raw edge also. But I kind of like the black in there. It makes, I think, it makes the hearts a little bit more um, visual. Because I know my other one, my original one, I used matching thread, and you couldn't, the, the hearts weren't quite as distinct in there. All right, so then the, now we're going to trim this one. We're going to trim this about an eighth of an inch as well. Oops, I got another tail. Get the tail out of there. Maybe, there we go. But the shape flex does keep it from fraying a little bit. So I sometimes will do that if I think it's going to get touched a lot. You know, like, you know, I knew that I was going to have this at the store and and people would be touching it and picking it up and stuff. So that way it won't fray quite as bad. And that seems to work. It's a little harder to trim, though, with that little bit extra weight on there. Okay, so there's our jar lid. And we're done with the embroidery for that one. What do you think? So here it is. There's our little jar with all of our confetti and our hearts in it. Okay? So, the next step, let's, let's go ahead and do... No, we won't have any more... Oh yeah, here's the, the the squaring up. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do the um, the sewing on the little on the little pinwheel, and then I will um, do the trimming all at the same time. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and change my machine over to sewing. Give me a second here. And I like to use um, I use a cotton. 
got a thread, a Pima cotton thread that I get at Hobby Lobby. I really like this. It's good thread and it it's um but it's a but it, it's it's a cotton thread, it's a number 50. That's usually what I sew with. So I'm gonna change to that and I'll change my foot. I'm going to put the J foot on because I like to use the piecing stitch, not a piecing foot, on my machine. Because I often have to zigzag like immediately afterwards, so I kind of like to not have to change that. Oh, here's my, whoop, uh oh, almost lost my bobbin. Here's my bobbin with my Kima cotton thread on it. So I'll take the embroidery bobbin thread out. Don't don't sew with your embroidery bobbin thread. It doesn't it isn't really strong enough. You know, it's kind of thin and it doesn't really hold much strength. So I never sew with that. All right, so we'll we'll set our little jar over here for a second. And let's talk about the next section, which is actually the little um the little pinwheel. So here's our pinwheel. Right here. Okay? And there's only two fabrics in it. Get, Got to get a hold of them here. Where did I put them all? Here they are. Okay, so I made a couple of pinwheels already. So what you do first is you take your two three and a half inch squares and you take one of each one. You know, one I had a polka dot and a stri uh, in the plaid, and you put them together, face face together. You know, right sides together. Um, and then you're going to draw a line from one corner diagonally to the other corner. Okay. And then what I did, and I've already sewn this so you can see, is what I did is I, I, where my mark is, I put my machine on Q02, second here, move my book, and that is the piecing stitch. So what it does is it places my needle on the right hand side of the foot. Okay, and then what I do is I run the outside edge, just like I was doing a quarter inch seam, I run the outside edge of my foot right down that line. And I just sewed right down the line on this side, and then I turned around and I sewed, I put the, the edge of my foot on the line in the center, and I sewed right down this line. Right down, I put the foot, so it's a quarter of an inch away from this line. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's what I did. I did that on both of these. I hold it a little close to the camera so you can see the stitches. Okay, so it's how I, I sewed a quarter of an inch from that center line on both sides. I used my Q02 um, piecing stitch, all right, with my J foot. Then what you do, now you can take this over to your um, cutting table if you want. I have a tendency just to cut these cut these with my scissors. When I do this, I hardly ever use a rotary cutter. I always cut them with scissors. I don't know why. I just, I don't like to get up, I guess. So, okay, so I'm just going to cut those a half like that. Okay, so there's my two half square triangles. I'm going to press to the darker side, which is going to be the red. Um, no, Q02, um, Cindy, yours may not say Q02, I, but it's going to be a stitch. Let me show it what it looks like. You have a different machine. But it's going to look like it's going to have the letter P next to it and the, the, the straight stitch is going to be kind of towards the right. Most of the machines say Q02, but I don't think you have the same tabs on yours. So it might just say piecing. Okay, so it's going to have like a P, a little P, and then it's going to be kind of towards the right hand side of the screen. Okay. And all the machines have that. All right. So here's my half square triangle. So I made four of them. So I did that with both of my um, sets of squares. And now I'm going to run over real quick. And I'm going to press these towards the dark side or the red. Okay. I'm just going to, I left my iron over here. All right, 
So Kimberbell has really good instructions on here. So you can see, and again, you can use your rotary cutter to cut those in part. They show you here, okay? And then you need, it says on step number five, that you need to square your, your squares to two and a half by two and a half. Now, I personally, my favorite way to do this, I have these little rulers, they're called block lock rulers, and these are up on our website too. I love these. They have a set that's one and a half, three and a half, and five and a half, and they have a set that's two and a half, four and a half, and six and a half. I think I have a nine and a half and a 12 and a half as well. So what's different about these is, can you see the slot back here? Okay, this slot lays on the seam allowance so that the, the ruler will not rock when you're trying to sew it, when you're trying to trim, okay? Now, I'm gonna trim on my lap here just so I don't have to get up for this one, and then I'll, I'll uh, move the camera in a minute for the other cutting. But I'm just gonna lay this down on my lap. This, I've got this little um, rotary mat. I love this, this is a little Martelli mat, uh, one of the little roundabouts, and this is a small one, and then I've got the regular one but this one, Judy got this for me for Christmas last year. I just love it. And that's, it's really good for these little teeny tiny things. And if, so what you do is you lay your block after you've ironed it. Okay, and here's the seam allowances on this side. So I'm going to put the ruler with laying on the seam allowance. And then the tips are going to be, let me see if I can get a little bit closer here. See if my camera will, I'm sorry, my arm doesn't stay down very well. But you're going to put the tips on that seam allowance. And then we're going to trim this down with a rotary cutter. Like I said, I don't normally do this on my lap, but I don't really have another choice here. Okay, we're going to flip this around. And if you have these, one of these little rotating mats, so much easier. And we're going to square this up to two, this is the two and a half inch one. There's a couple of different other um, half square triangle square up rulers that are really cool, but I've always, I've just had these for years. So, okay, so there's my two and a half inch square. All right, we'll do the other one. Okay, a second, I'm gonna get this one turned. Whoops, got my ruler turned the wrong way. There we go. All right, we're gonna get it laid flat. And then that little notch right there is where the seam allowance is. So then the ruler is flat and it doesn't rock. That's what's the hardest part about doing half square triangles because your ruler would rock all over the place. I mean, I could get them squared up okay, but man, I had a hard time because it would just rock back and forth and then you wouldn't get them as beautiful as you wanted. Those, these work great. Okay. So there's my two and a half inch. Oops, I missed a little... Missed a little dog gear, so just trim that off. There we go. All right, so there's my little two and a half inch half square triangles. Okay, so we have we have four of those because we're just going to make one pinwheel. All right, so let's finish up the sewing. Let me get this out of my way. And I'll bring the other mat over here for the other trimming. one back there. All right. So let's do, we'll do the piecing on this. So I'm, I'm kind of a self-taught piecer. And when I do these, I like to, I, I have a little, couple little things I always do just, it just helps me. So I don't know, for those of you who are, are real big quilters, this may not be the way you do it, but this is the way I've always done these. Okay. So we're going to look at our picture here. So we have this pinwheel laid out correctly. So we're going to lay, you know, this one here, and then this one's going to lay like this. And that's the top row. And then the bottom row is going to lay like this and like this. So I always like to look at the picture so I know that I've got it right. All right. So we're going to sew together with a quarter inch seam. And again, I'm using my Q02 piecing stitch. Second here, I gotta plug in my foot controller. And when you do these, if if you've got them laid out correctly, <laughs> they should nest. 
these little seams should nest nicely in the corn in the in the tip here so i'm going to lay this one over on top of this one and i can feel that those little seams nested together because i've got one press one way and one press the other okay i'm going to put a little pin there And then we're going to do our quarter inch seam allowance. So, oops, I don't think I threaded my machine. Helps if you thread the machine. So again, I'm on Q02 with my J foot and I'm gonna run this along the edge of my J foot because the needle is moved slightly to the right. Okay. All right, so we got the first one done. And then let's do this one. So now we know that was the top one. This is the bottom one. So this one is going to go flip this way. Like this. And again, your little seam should nest in the center. Lay flat, you know, so those seams should lay nice and flat in the center. So I'm pretty careful when I do this. I, I, I've done a lot of pinwheels. So <laughs> I've gotten better at them over the years. Kimberbell likes to use lots of pinwheels. So I've made lots of pinwheels. And I like half square triangles, so. All right, so we're gonna sew this one. All right. Now this is my little trick, because I want everything to be nice and flat in the center too. This is the bottom, this is the top. So I'm going to, this is row one. So on the odd rows, I like to press my seam to the left. So that's what I'm going to go do. And then on the bottom row, I like to press my seam to the right. So in other words, even rows to the right and odd rows to the left. So I hope that that makes sense to everybody because then my seam will be opposite in the center also. So I always do odd rows to the left, even rows to the right. And hopefully I got these in the right orientation. <laughs> so I'll go press. Okay, I think I got it. So here's my two halves, and then I'm going to put these right sides together. And with any luck at all, my little seams should nest in the center. And I got it right. Miracle upon miracles today. We're gonna I'm gonna put a pin. I like to put a pin on either side of that seam because I have a tendency to scoot if I don't, okay? So then we're gonna sew the two halves together. All right, so then we're gonna sew again, a quarter inch seam, we're gonna sew these two halves together. I had to do quite a few, um, squares for the okay now you notice that I went over those pins these are the only pins I ever do that with and I like to leave them in when I have those seams like that because I want them to stay and not scoot you do not have to sew, sew over pins and I would not sew over any other pins besides these these are extra fine magic pins and they're called patchwork pins and they're extremely soft but I never sew over any other pins except these. So I did take just take them out. Just be very careful if you do. And I don't go over them very fast. All right. So then, hopefully with this, we open this up, it looks like a pinwheel. Yay! I think we did it. Now, I'm going to go rogue. Normally, you know, they tell you, you know, to press your seam to the right or the bottom or the top, but I'm going to go rogue and I am going to go press my seam open because then my flat, the center will be flatter. All right, so I'm actually going to go rogue. I'm going to finger press this open a little bit and then I'm going to go press my center seam open to keep things a little flatter in the center.
and there's my little pinwheel and with any luck at all I'm gonna go measure it I think it should be four and a half by four and a half And it looks like I did pretty well. So I got a four and a half by four and a half inch pinwheel. So there's our pinwheel block. So that's going to go underneath this one that we already trimmed. But we got to trim the other block. So I'm going to turn the page here. And at the first it shows you, you know, trimming the square one. And I already did that. This one was trimmed to four and a half by four and a half. Okay. The other one the little the little jar then we're going to trim to four and a half by six and a half so let me get my ruler out here i'm going to move this camera over so you can see me doing this and we're gonna we're gonna trim this block let me pull my camera over a little bit so you can see my cutting cutting over here pull this up a little bit all right, and then I need my four and a half by six and a half inch ruler for the rectangle. And then I'm going to get the bigger one. The, these are the orange pop rulers. If you don't have these and you're doing Kimberbell, I know they're kind of expensive, but man, are they cool. They, it, this just makes it so much easier. Um, I also, as you noticed, I have left the tearaway stabilizer on. Okay, I like to I like to leave my stabilizer on while I'm trimming because I just think it keeps everything flatter. But I am going to go press around the outside edge with the iron real quick so that's flat. Just be careful of that vinyl. Okay, that looks much better. Okay, so there's my block. Got it pressed. Be very careful of your vinyl. And then I'm going to take, this one's going to be cut four and a half by six and a half. So I'm going to take my four and a half by six and a half inch ruler. And I'm just going to kind of visually line that up. It needs to go this way just a little bit. Looks pretty good. Okay. And then I like to put the bigger one on top. You know, it just gives me something more to grip onto. So I like to have them both on there. And I, and now I'm on this bigger uh, Martelli uh, roundabout. This is my regular sized one. And I'm going to start over here. We're going to cut on the inside. And just be careful, and I'm quite dil diligent when I do this. I go slowly. I kind of pull back into the corner and then go forward. Then I'm going to spin it around. I'm going to start in a little ways. I'm going to pull back into the corner and go forward. I just take my time. The other thing you could do is, if you like, you could mark the... the um, Take a marking pen and mark in here, and then take it and use a regular rotary cutter. So if that works better for you, or a regular um, ruler and rotary cutter. So that's easier for you. But I've kind of gotten used to doing these now. It took me a little while to get used to them. All right, so we got this at four and a half by six and a half. I'm going to take this off. And again, like I said, I like to leave, boy, do I need a new blade. Holy cow. Need a blade. Just have to do that. Got a little spot here that didn't cut. We'll get a new blade. Okay, I think I got it. Oop, there's still another little spot over here too. Didn't want to go. I knew my blade was getting bad, so there we go. Okay, that, now I'm going to take the. Um, now I'm going to take the stabilizer off the back. Because I like to leave it on while I'm trimming to keep everything flat. But now I am going to remove the stabilizer. Just be careful since those are just straight stitches. They are triple stitches, so they should be fine. I didn't take it out of the center of the jar. I just did it around the outside edge. All right, so I'm just going to pull this off. 
All right. There is the jar. And there's all the little confetti. See, it, there's a little bit of space in there so that the confetti moves around in there. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So now we're ready to put it together. Very exciting. So I, this is always the fun part, just getting it put together. So we got it trimmed. And I trimmed this, the other little block to four and a half by four and a half using the same method. I did that one early. I did that one actually last night. All right, so we move the camera back here. Okay, pull this down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now we need to put the two pieces together. So we've got our here's our little here's our little jar. And then we need the little top and bottom pieces for that. So there's a little headers, you know, little little border blocks for that. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's do that one first. So we're going to put those little those little border pieces that that matched my backing. So we're going to put one of these on the top and one of these on the bottom of our jar. And again, I'm using Q02 and my piece my piecing stitch with my J foot second here and we're going to use a quarter of an inch seam on this one as well get this lined up now when we go to press this be very very careful because of that vinyl do my quarter inch seam turn it over and we'll do the other side Okay, you hopefully you can see okay. Do this side. Doesn't look like I cut. I'm not the best cutter in the world, so my little headers, one of my little borders is is a little off, so I may have to trim it a little bit. Wouldn't be the first time. Alright, so we'll sew these together. And when I'm over here by the jar, I have to kind of, you know, give it a little bit of help just so that it doesn't slide off the, the jar base. Okay, so there's that. So then what I'm going to do, I'll do all the pressing at the same time. I'm going to press the, these. I'm just going to leave this flat right here. I'm going to just press the, the little borders out like that and like this. And I'll go over and do that at the iron real quick before we put it together. Like that. Okay. So there's our little jar, and I'll press those. But I did not open those up. I just laid them flat on top like that, okay? Then we're going to put the pinwheel is going to be um, underneath the word block. And I like to try to leave that open seam, you know, horizontal. So I'm going to make sure I have it laid like that. And then I'm going to put the right sides together here. And with any luck at all, they match up. That's always the goal, right? All right, so put a little pin in the center there. And I'm going to do a quarter inch seam here as well. Okay. This one I will pull because that's not holding anything. All right, we get this one lined up down here. Whoops, I'm a little off here for a second. A quarter inch seam. Now, since this one has that shape flex in it against this fabric, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to open the seam up because um, most of the time when I do these these Kimberbell projects that I'm doing and I've got shape flex in a block and they do a lot of quilty you know blocks I like to open these with the shape flex because it seems like it's not as bulky as it is if you lay it to one side or the other okay so I am going to open this up and I'm going to go press this with my iron be careful of the vinyl All right, 
And I don't think I touched my vinyl. And I do that all the time. All right, let's see if I can get through this one without doing that. Okay, then we got to sew the two pieces together. So we're going to put these. This piece is going to be over here. And with any luck at all, it matches up. So we're going to put the right sides together here. Looks like one of my border. Eh, it's not too bad. It should be okay. All right, so we're going to put these together. Put a couple pins in here, and we're going to sew our two halves together. Maybe. Get our little halves together. Maybe. <laughs> Having trouble with the pins tonight, guys. Sorry. For some reason. I'm either dropping them or they don't go in. I did learn something new today. My my uh, dad doesn't like to go out in the cold, so I did learn how to use. Um, we got a little razor today, or, uh, and I and I cut his hair. So I did learn how to cut hair today. <laughs> it actually it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> I was rather shocked. I was afraid that he'd look like he was scalped. So he got his hair cut. He was very happy to get his hair cut. All right, so now we're going to cut sew these two together. Quarter inch seam again. Get them lined up. Yeah, so I got, I mean, it was cheaper than getting his hair cut. <laughs> getting that little, getting a little razor to get his hair cut. He just doesn't like to go out in the cold. So um, he's been wanting his hair cut, and, and it's just too cold for him to go out. All right, so we're going to do our quarter inch seam. Try to pull these pins as I go here. All right. Down onto the block here. Try not to get my seam flipped up on me. Should be okay. Whoops, second here. I think I'm now I'm off. A second. There we go. Okay, so there's that seam. Let's see how we did. Okay, so this is where things get a little care you have to be very careful. Okay. <laughs> now I I need to I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this seam up also, but be super careful of that vinyl. Do not touch the vinyl even from the back because it will cause problems. So I'm gonna finger press this as much as I can first. I tell you what, that crazy that crazy vinyl, you just gotta be careful of it. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda of finger press it and I'm gonna take it over. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, you don't like going out, I don't like going out in the cold either. But yeah, he was so happy to get his hair cut today. All right, so I'm going to go press this open. So I went rogue again, and I opened up the seam. Be careful of the vinyl. Don't touch the vinyl. All right, I think I managed to do it. I do have a very, very small iron now. I have um, I have the $10 variety from Walmart because I keep killing irons. So I'm not having luck, good luck with irons right now. Okay, so there's our top. What do you think? Isn't that cute? I just love, is it so bright and cheery, isn't it? <laughs> okay, and I've managed to not touch the vinyl. So that's the, that's the goal here. Okay. So that is the construction of the top. The last section is going to be putting it together. So we're going to go ahead and since this one's going to have binding, um, we're going to put the, I'm going to turn this over on my table here. Right side down. Oops, I don't want to lose my twine here. And then I'm going to put the backing, I pre-hemmed these. So on one of the long sides of the 
backing, you're going to, you know, turn it over a quarter of an inch and another quarter of an inch and hem it, okay, on both sides, on one long side of each piece, okay. Then I'm going to put, I got this turned right side down on my table, and I'm going to put the wrong sides together because this one's going to have binding, so I'm not going to put right sides together. Now, if you don't want the binding on it, just put it right sides together and then turn it right side out, and you can just have it that way. So that works too. But the raw edges are going to be together and the hemmed piece is going to be on the inside. So I've got that. So I'm going to kind of match my corners up here first. Oh my gosh, I actually cut my backs pretty pretty well this time. I have a hard time with the backs too. Sometimes I cut them wrong. <laughs> Alright, so we'll get a few pins there. And then we're going to go over, ouch, these pins, these, these magic pins, by the way, they're really good pins, and, but they're very sharp. <laughs> so I'm always poking myself with them. I bleed a lot on my stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I got this end anchored down here. Put another pin over here. And let's do this side. This would be so cute. I love that. I, I picked striped binding, and it turned out so cute, so I really like the striped binding on it. Okay, so there's the one piece. Then we're going to do the same thing with the other side. Then remember, the, the, um, the overlap is going to be where the hems are. So we're going to put this side on this way. And we've done this now with a couple pillows, so this is not the first time we've done this one this way. Okay, get the corners done. Oh, just a reminder, everybody, too, on Wednesday afternoon at 2 o'clock, we're going to do Shields Live again. And we're going to do some, we're going to do some um, stuff on the scan and cut this week. So come join us on, on the, the Shields Sewing Center um, Facebook page. So we're going to do, um, I think we're going to do scanning. I, the, you know, the that's what's so cool about the scanning cut is the, the actual scanning part. And um, so that's what we're going to work. We're going to talk about the scanning. That's just like the real wow factor of that. Okay. Whoops. Looks like i got to do this side yet. Get this one. And then... There we go. There's our overlap. So this one's got a nice overlap on it too. So it overlaps several inches so that it won't it won't pook out when, when you go to put the pillow form in. Okay, then we're going to now I do mine a little differently here too. I like to top stitch this shut, but it says to do a quarter inch top stitch, but then sometimes I kind of get off a little bit when I go to put my binding on. So I'm just gonna do a an eighth inch top stitch instead of a quarter inch top stitch. So when I do an eighth inch top stitch on this, on the brother feet, there's a notch in the center and there's a notch to the right. And what I do is run the edge of my fabric along that right side notch and then it makes a nice eighth inch top stitch with the needle in the center position. So I just put my needle in the center position and then I'm going to do a top stitch. And the reason I'm doing the eighth inch is that way, you know, my binding then, if I get a little off on my top stitch, when I go to put this together, then my bind, it's not going to show in my binding. So that's the one difference that I made, and that's on step number 16 in the book. So you might want to mark eighth inch instead of quarter. So I'm just going to go down here to the corner. I'm going to turn around here and, and you did you notice that my foot came up I have my pivot feature on the pivot is on a lot of the machines and if you don't know what it looks like it's this little button right here that looks like a foot with the with the needle down so if it's blue that means it's turned on I love I love my pivot feature it's really good for like chain piecing and stuff so I leave it on almost all the time so anytime you let up on your on your Foot controller, see how the foot comes up and the, and the needle goes down. So I find it very convenient. Right. Let's 
get this turned. Do an eighth of an inch. I'm going to try to take my pins out as I go here. Oops. Got a little ex over exuberant there, so we'll back up. Okay. Still doing our eighth inch. Kind of got off on this side. There we go. My pillows had different backs. I didn't have enough of the same red to do both backs. So this one has a different back than the other one does. Okay. Turn around the corner here. Yeah, so it takes a little while to do the binding. Actually, we might have enough time. Do you guys have enough time? I can at least get the binding sewn on. It's only about 7.15, so if that's okay, I could at least sew the binding on. Got it ready to go over here, so. Right, so I'm still doing my eighth inch. We're just going around. And then these are envelope backs, so you just, you know, you just sew all the way around the outside edge because it's going to, you put the pillow in through the little, envelope over here. All right, so we're getting our... I'm getting thumbs up, so that does that mean that you want me to put the binding on? I can put the binding on. I don't know if I can get the whole thing done, but I can at least get it started. Yes, please. Super cute pillow, and I know, isn't it, though? Okay, so now we've got it top-stitched. Okay, so now it's all together, so we know if everything's... Oh, boy, have I got little ravels all over the place here. Let's get rid of some of these. And then let's let's talk about the binding. Now, like I said, I, we, I did quite a, a lot more detail on the binding um, on the January pillow because it was very similar to this. And then also the um, September one that we did last September, I really went into detail on binding. So if you need more help, you can go watch those two videos. Um, but we'll do some binding. We've got time. It's 7.15, so we're doing good. 717, I guess. All right, so here's my binding. Now, we're ready for binding. Got to find it. Here it is. Now, my binding, I have to look at my binding. I made a little boo-boo. Can you see my little boo-boo here? Maybe, can't see it yet. Had a little boo-boo with my binding here. It, um, I kind of slipped with the rotary cutter. So I'm going to do a little bit of, we're going to have to make it work. <laughs> So I want that up, that little piece up, so that I can see what I'm doing with it. And when I sew on binding, there's two ways to do this. Um, you can, I like to sew my binding on with the sewing machine completely, okay? And if you don't, if you want to hand stitch the binding on, um, you can do that as well. So if you're going to hand stitch your binding on with needle and thread, you're going to put the binding on the front and flip it to the back and hand stitch it on. But if you're going to do it all with the sewing machine, you're going to put it on the back of the pillow and flip it to the front. So I'm going to do it that way. So I'm going to start on the back of the pillow here with my binding. So I like to start on the bottom. So there's the bottom of my pillow. I'm going to start with a little tail here and we're going to start maybe mm, tail needs to be about yay long about two-thirds of the way up okay and I'm going to go back to my Q02 with my quarter inch seam oh yeah the pivoting is great isn't it Carol I use pivot all the time most of the machines have all the way down to the 35 like 3500 37 30 um, 600d's have the pivot feature and then a bunch of the sewing machines do too but I really like the pivot I use it a lot all right so I'm gonna start over here towards the end with my quarter inch seam I'm gonna tie off over here oops maybe and I'm gonna go quarter inch seam down to the corner and I'm going to stop about a quarter of an inch from the end of the seam or of the the a quarter inch from the corner okay and then I'm going to cut off so I'm doing this on the back because I'm going to flip mine to the front and, hand, and sew it on with the sewing machine 
Then I'm going to take this end at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to press it up and look at my corner, make sure I get my corner. Okay. And then I'm going to flip down, straight down. What did you say, Colleen? Yep, connecting the ends. So this this works really well. I've I've been practicing doing binding with the machine. Not I don't do machine binding with every single thing. I I do like to use you know to hand stitch it on the back if it's a really nice quilt that I'm going to give like it as a, as a gift or something. But for these all these little projects and these little pillows and stuff, I just don't have time to sit there and hand stitch, and I really don't like to hand stitch. <laughs> so I usually do these with the machine. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to start, stop about a quarter of an inch from the corner. Now you notice that I'm eyeballing this. By the way, I've done a lot of binding. So, so I'm starting about a quarter, stopping about a quarter of an inch from the end. I'm going to flip it around. And then we're going to take that end. I am going to put it up at a 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to flip it straight down. Okay, line it up with my side, and then we're going to do a quarter of an inch seam. Oops, looks like my thread cut a little short, so second here, pull it under my foot. That's very important. Keep your keep your thread under your foot. Am I using a binding foot? I am not using a binding foot. I don't care for the binding feet. I like to use the J foot. Um, and then I'll show you the binding foot that I have when I get ready to turn this over. Um, I don't care for the binding foot as well because I can't see with the zigzag as well. So I use my J foot. That's still my favorite foot for putting binding on because I can see through it. Okay, again, I'm going to stop up here about a quarter of an inch from the end, tie off. And I'll show you the binding foot that I use when I do use it. Okay. We're going to flip this around. One Last time we're getting close to the end here. We've got one more little corner to do. 45 degree angle. Get it set. And then I'm going to pull it down. Straight down. Line up my corner. Yeah, there's actually several binding feet that are available. And... Um, it's like a bi-level foot, so it does work really well, but it actually works better if you use a straight stitch to put your binding on. Now you can see this, I'm getting to the little part where I have this little problem here, okay? So this way I can see <laughs> that I'm not going to, I think I'm going to be okay, because I, I thought I had not bit in more than a quarter of an inch, so I think we'll be okay. Make sure I'm lined up with my edge here. So I had a little boo-boo with the rotary cutter. Jan and the rotary cutter doesn't always get along real well. So I think we're going to be fine. And this is going to be on the inside. So I think we'll be fine. You'll never see it. All right. Let's get this turned. And then we'll go down to the bottom. So I'm just getting that caught. Okay, one more stitch. I'm going to turn my last corner. Okay, and again, we're going to go up at a 45 degree angle, like that, and I think I can just pull this off because I think I'll be okay. I'm just going to pull that out of there and get it out of my way, okay, and then straight down. Yeah, don't, don't trust Jan with the rotary cutter. I don't always, we don't always see eye to eye. <laughs> I'm not very good with them. Okay. Same thing, I'm going to, you notice I'm dropping my needle when I start. So if you drop your needle before you start and take a couple real s slow stitches, you won't get that burying problem. A lot of people complain about that. And my grandmother taught me that years ago because she had a treadle machine. And if you didn't do it with a treadle, then you were really going to have a problem. That is correct. That's the one that I have, Jan. I just have to find it. I know it's down here, but I'll show you. I don't. the 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 problem I have with this one is it when I do a zigzag, 
it's much harder to see. I know I've got it in here. Here it is. So I'll, I'll show it to you. I have trouble seeing through it because it is not got a, it's, it's solid on this top. So I'll show it to you here. Okay. So let me get this little piece out of there that I messed up. And now we're going to do the little flip. So um, if you don't have this, this is how I learned to make binding. Um, I have some friends that, um, I have a friend that gave me a little thing. It's called Bind Aid. And it is up on the Dropbox for So Along With Jan. It's just a PDF document. And it's called Bind Aid. And if you don't have that downloaded, this is how, if you have trouble getting this, this little flip done, go download that because it really helps. Okay, this is how I learned to do binding. Because I'd never, ever done binding before. I mean, I, I'm not really a quilter. I learned to be a quilter through my embroidery. But um, but I ended up doing a lot of binding. So this is the, the end that we just ended with. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lay that down. And I'm just going to kind of fold it over. And then I'm going to put the other piece on top. And I use two and a quarter inch binding. Let me find my seam guide. There we go. My hem guide. And you need to cut off the other piece that we ended with at two and a quarter inches. If you use two and a half inch binding, it would be two and a half inches. Okay. But I use two and a quarter. Get this out of my way here. I'm having a little trouble. Okay. So I'm going to put this, I got this marked at two and a quarter. And I'm going to put a pin on the back piece where I'm going to cut that one off at two and a quarter. And you want to be pretty accurate with this measurement and you want it to be just if anything a smidge a smidge short because you want it to be snug when it when it folds out okay so let me see if i how i did here get this out of my way we'll, we'll measure one more time it's two and a quarter from the end here so I got my end and it looks like we're good two and a quarter okay so then I'm gonna cut this off this is the this is the where we ended so I'm gonna cut that longer piece off I just fold it over where my pin is and and cut it off with my scissors And like I said, if you're using two and a quarter inch binding, it's two and a quarter. And if you're using two and a half inch binding, it's two and a half. It just depends on the size of your binding. I like two and a quarter, okay, because I like my binding to be snug. All right, then I'm going to take the end that I ended with, and I'm going to open it up and lay it flat in front of me like this. Okay, that's where, where we ended. Now the place where we started is over here. Okay, now I made mine a little short, so I'm actually going to take rip a couple stitches out of here because it's I need a little bit more wiggle room here, so I'm going to rip a couple stitches out of this. So that's a little longer, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it at a 45 degree angle, like that, and then I'm going to open it up and continue on in the same direction. So just open it up and continue on in the same direction like this. Okay. And then I'm going to line up my corners and pin those. So that's usually the hardest part is this flipping business. When you flip the ends like this, and that bind aid has a very, very good picture because, like I said, I didn't even know how to, had no idea how to make binding or put binding on or anything. And um, one of my friends gave me this long, long time ago, 15 or more years ago. And um, it's that's how I learned to make binding. In fact, I used to, years for years, I just got the little piece of paper out and had it right in front of me as I was doing this. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to mark where the corners are, because you can't see that when it's underneath, and I'm going to mark this one because it's white, just to give me something to aim at. Now I'm going to put my needle back in the center. Remember, it was at a quarter of an inch, so I'm going to put it back in my center needle position, and we're just going to eyeball this. I, I, you can turn your laser light on, but this is so short, 
I usually just eyeball these. And I'm going to take a couple stitches here. And then I'm going to lay, make sure this is laid nice and flat. Make sure the underneath piece is nice and flat. And then I'm going to sew straight over to this other corner. There we go. I find that the eyeball method works quite well once you get the hang of it. All right. So then I'm going to take these pins out. And I'm going to, just, just for safety, I am going to just pull it and make sure that it lays flat. And look there, we did it. Okay, so it's lays flat. So I just got to take this bulky piece out of here. This is going to trim it with the scissors. You can do it with a rotary cutter too if you want, but like I said, rotary cutters and I don't always get along. So we'll just lay this flat. I'm going to open this seam up. And I always have trouble if there's stripes, just so you know. I never, ever get the stripes exactly lined up. <laughs> I've given up. So I just sew it together. All right. So then we're going to, I'm going to, I like to pin this piece just to make sure that I know where I started and stopped. And I had a couple little extra stitches I had to take out. So make sure we get over there. And then look, it's flat. That's the hardest part is the flip part. Get that. And it fits. Look at there. That's the goal. And we'll stitch it together. All right. So I'll put my needle back to the Q02 or the quarter inch seam. And then I'm going to stitch that last little bit of the seam. And then you've got continuous binding. Again, I put this on the back because I'm going to be doing this. Um, I'm going to stitch on the front. Let's see if I, I think I did pretty well. Seam. Just a second here. Gonna, I want to go out to here. All right. Oops, I might have to go a couple more stitches, actually. Let me go a couple more stitches. Just because I ripped a couple stitches out of there. There we go. Take the pins out. See if I can get them over here so before I stab myself. And there is my binding is sewn on. So what I'm gonna do at this point, if I've got this on the back, I take this over to my iron and I really, really press this really well. And I don't know that I'll take time to do this tonight, but I really, really press this well, okay? Because you want a very good crisp press on the back because when you're doing this on the back. And of course, we've got that vinyl in there, so be super careful. You're gonna iron from the outside. Okay, then when we go to turn it to the front, I zigzag. And again, I've made several videos, so you can go back and watch another video if you haven't done this before and you need to refresh or you need to do this. I bring this over and when I zigzag, I use a 2.0 width and a 1.4 length. And I put the left zig just off my binding and the right zag on the binding. So then you know you're gonna hit the back if you've got a good crisp um, seam back here, okay? Um, I use the J foot because I can see through the front of it, okay? We also, and I, like I said, I go through and I, I, this was, I wasn't really planning on doing the binding tonight. So it, so I want, I would encourage you to go watch those other videos. They're both, they're on YouTube. It's easier to find them on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com, sew along with Jan, and then go to the Bench Buddy um, playlist. And all the Bench Buddy designs are in there. And the January pillow, the January square pillow had the binding. And I did pretty much uh, a detailed video there. 
And then there's also the September rectangle one. I did a very detailed one there if you're having trouble with the binding. Because um, I, I pin my little corners in like this and get them all pinned in so that they're beautiful. And then I do my zigzag. Now, Jan was asking about this, this foot. So this is the binding foot. And this is really cool if you're doing straight stitching. A lot of people like to do straight stitch instead of zigzag when they sew this on and they do a straight stitch. This works very well for the straight stitch because see it's bi-level. Can you see that there's like a bi-level, there's like a, like a ledge right there. And when you go to put this down on your binding, that little ledge fits right up against the fold. Can you kind of see how it just kind of clings there? Okay. That's what she was talking about. This works really well for a straight stitch. So then what I do is I take my needle away from the center position and move it slightly to the right. And then I can straight stitch on the back. If you've got a good crisp seam here, you're going to be straight, straight stitching on your binding on the other side and you're going to catch it. That's the goal. But I do have to move my needle to the right just a little bit. Not in the center, because I can't get it in the center with using the ledge to help me keep straight. Okay? So I always move my needle just slightly to the right. This one's really hard for me to use to zigzag, because you can see it's all metal. So you can't see where you're going here. So I, I have a little harder time zigzagging with this one, so I don't use it as much, because I zigzag when I do my binding and I use this J foot instead because you can see this one is clear in the front so then I can see where I'm going okay so that's why I use this one but this is awesome foot and it's just the quilt binding foot is what it's called it's a baby lock foot actually uh, works on the brother machines too I don't know it's it's not twenty dollars I know it might be fifteen to twenty um Okay, so a lot of people ask me about those um, adjustable binding feet, and I've never had good luck with those because they're really made for binding, as in like bias tape binding that you'd put around a sleeve on, a, on a, like a sundress or something. They're really not made for binding binding. The adjustable one will work, but I don't always have good luck with them. This is the old-fashioned one. This is not the adjustable one. So um, the other one is the adjustable one. It's plastic and has a little adjuster on it. Um, the binding foot works the best, I think, because especially if you do a straight stitch. I like to do a zigzag, so I use the J. So it just depends on how you're going to apply your binding. I found that the zigzag works better for me. So let me show you this pillow that's all done. So I pinned my little corners and see my beautiful little my little beautiful little corners. And I did this one with this one I'm gonna do, you can hardly see the stitches. Um, I did this one with monofilament because you know it's black and white. And so if I use white, it shows on the black, and if I use black, it shows on the white. So I use very matchy, matchy thread for my binding. And this then is monofilament. So I'm gonna put monofilament in to do my binding. I wasn't prepared for that, so I don't know where my monofilament is right now. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get this far, so. Okay, so I use my, my um, zigzagging. So, like I said, go, go to YouTube, sew along with Jan, and then find the playlist Bench Buddies and watch the January Bench Buddy or the September Rectangle Bench Buddy. And I do really detailed... Um, binding on those and that's how I do it is with the machine okay so I'm going to finish this up later I have to eat some supper first and then I'll finish this up later but um it's such a cute pillow isn't that darling I just thought it was adorable and then you put a little piece of gosh I've got cat hair my cat must have been laying on this um then you take the little the little piece of um twine and tie a little bow and I just I just hot glued it above the jar on the bottom of the jar there so okay so but please go watch those though if you're if you're really concerned about the the binding go go watch those videos and um i do pretty pretty detailed um binding but this is that that binding foot 
Um, it is not on the website, but it, we do have them at the store, and it's the quilt binding foot, I think is what they call it. Um, so if you're interested in this, I, I know they're not even $20. It might be like $19.99 or $14, $15.99. It's not very expensive. So um, if you're interested in that. But this is better if you're using a straight stitch to put your binding on and not a zigzag. I like this one better for the zigzag just because I can see through the plastic. Okay? So um, next week, let's turn this around and I'll say goodbye to everybody. So we got our little pillow done. I'll finish up my binding. I'm going to turn this around. I'm doing this the old-fashioned way, so it still works. And did it stop for anybody tonight? Did anything stop or start or blip or anything tonight? So next week we're going to have a software class, okay? So um, we're going to have a software class, and this is the little candle mat. Isn't that cute? It's a... It's a winter candle mat so if you don't have the software and you'd still like to stitch this out it is you go to the group and the very first post is the dropbox and it's in the dropbox as um under the software there's two links now one for the sewing one for the software um and it is in the software one and it's on it's under winter candle mat so I put a PES file in there for those of you who don't have the software and you would like to stitch it out. And it does stitch out really cute. So we're going to create this in the software, but if you want to just stitch it, the, the PES files up there on the, gr on the group. So, okay. If you have any questions, you can message me and I can tell you where it is. But this is what we're going to do next week. All right. And then we're going to start some March pillows after that. So... The video quality was better. It is, Lisa, because um, honestly, this camera is the best. I don't care for my new computer's camera, um, but I think, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to try it this way for a while and see if it goes okay. So, and, um, but everything went okay tonight, so hopefully. So hopefully, I, and I don't think it's the internet. See, this just was fine. So I think it's something to do with StreamYard and I haven't figured out what, but um so anyway um are there any questions about anything for next week for the candle mat so if you need help finding the design if you want to sew it out you know text me and i'll i'll give you the link to it if you have trouble but i thought it turned out really cute it was fun it was a fun little project so okay all right so thank you i i went a little longer tonight because i was working on the binding i wasn't expecting to but we got the binding on so you know how the flip worked and then um, go find Bind Aid, because that one's also in Dropbox. If you don't have that, it works really well. And I will, um, and go watch the videos if you need help, more help with the binding. And I will see you next week, and we'll do a little bit of software. So thanks. Aren't these, cla aren't these little pillows fun? They're so much fun. So. so thanks, everybody. I really appreciate seeing you tonight, and I'm glad that it worked better tonight. I was a little nervous last week with all that popping and all that stopping and everything. <laughs> so good night, everybody. See you later. Have a good evening.